Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We bring you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves while putting people before political parties. We examine current events from a libertarian perspective with the goal of leaving you better informed. Please be sure and rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and subscribe on Patreon at WeAreLibertarians.com. In exchange for supporting our program, we give you all kinds of bonus content and free stuff. You would have heard a Jordan Peterson rant at the very beginning of the show by Creighton Harrington. I rolled tape before we started, so you get to hear the beginning and the end. You get to hear... I wouldn't say rant. Yeah, you were you were walking us through, Dr. It was, Jordan Peterson. It was a talk about. <laughs> and uh, you're going to have to talk in that <laughs> mic louder there, buddy. It was a talk about. And uh, you you get to hear it in without commercial, high definition, CD quality mm-hmm. audio. Mm-mm. Yes, My Smooth Pipes. What could you ask for better than that? This show is crowdsourced, or, so you can send us news with the hashtag WAL News or in our Facebook group and Discord channel. We're always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. Please be warned that this show is raw, unedited, and authentic, so the language is sometimes strong and offensive. Joining me today are the original co hosts from the 30s, the 40s. Woo! Episodes, uh, the first few. Uh, Creighton Harrington, you're first. How are you? Very good. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> uh, he's he's wearing a Public Enemy Fight the Power t-shirt and a Han Solo jacket. Well, I'm not wearing the jacket right now. All right. And uh, Chris Galt, how are you? Oh, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> We're all dreamers now, aren't we, Chris? Oh, yeah. You came in with a little pep in your step, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Your, your buddy Trump. Great week. <laughs> Don't you feel inspired to be an American right now? I always feel inspired to be an American. I don't need a politician to do that for mm, me. Man, but it feels good when one does it for you. <laughs> All right, we'll get to that. We're going to talk. America. Gonna talk he's got a different. Pers- he's got a. He's got a different idea for what the tone of the podcast should be. He's got like a late night, late night. Uh, what's what's the smoking s- jacket? What no? What's the what's uh, what? the ladies' man? Right. Yeah. Right? He, he does kind of have that ladies' man robe on. You get look some, like Hef- get some cavassier and put on an afro <laughs> over here. Yeah, I wore shorts the last two weeks, but it is too cold today. Yeah. <laughs> sweatpants. I don't even <laughs> sweatpants. Yeah, Galt, you strike me as a sweatpants. They, they go under the table. Nobody can see anyway. <laughs> I'm wearing basketball shorts too. See? Yeah. I'm wearing my nice maroon shirt with my fresh fashy haircut. I'm it, still. I don't think I've been on here to talk about the Russia thing. Like, in my experience, like, aren't we still just mad that they got emails that made the Democrats look bad? That's that's basically the problem. Here. Like when 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 Here's, they say Russia meddled in in American elections, they mean they released private Democrat they, emails that make the Democrats look bad. Well, that's Fancy, one but, that's one factor of a multivariate analysis. But but what else has Russia no. done? <laughs> so what you're saying? They've bought is, Facebook ads. They've they've made bot shill accounts on Twitter. They yeah they they've drove pushed narratives. The, really the that, only effective thing. The only they did all that stuff. But like as a social media marketer, I can so tell you small. none of that matters. Yeah. What really mattered was hacking into the DNC and stealing stuff and giving it to WikiLeaks. That's what Russia did. Now what the republic or what the Democrats are always trying to find is. Did the Trump people know about it? Did they help with it? Did they tell them where to place the? F- did they collude? Right. They anyway? really want it to be Watergate. It's very clear none of that happened. That none of these people could have done that had they wanted to, and the Mueller investigation has all been about trying to catch Trump in perjury or obstruction of justice, and and hoping that he's dumb enough to do either or both, and he is, and so it has just it's been a brilliant political ploy to try and get Trump and his administration on charges to build the narrative of a scandal that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of a scandal. The problem is now it's coming back to bite them in the ass. Mm -hmm. This Nunez memo that we're hearing so much about, the hashtag release the memo, is uh, some people in the administration say it's way overblown. It should have been released quicker because now everybody thinks that this is the smoking gun And it's not as exciting, but basically what Nunez did is he wrote out all the ways that the FBI screwed up in the Hillary investigation and in some ways in the Mueller investigation. And when this memo comes out, some of these House Republicans are saying this is the end of the FBI, blah, blah, blah. Some of the people who've read it say it's not that big of a deal. But the only way for us to have any clue about it, and the the Democrats are, oh, now all of a sudden... They aren't pro-Snowden. They aren't pro-Chelsea Manning. 
They're well, to pro. Be fair, half of the Democrats weren't pro Snowden. Well, yeah, yeah, but now all of them are because they know that it's the end of whatever's in it is going to be spun into the it, end. It, of the implication is is that it, the it, is that the, uh, Barack Obama told the FBI to spy using the the power. I mean, this yeah. is right. The spy using the powers under the Patriot Act, and whatever, on Trump campaign aides on Carter Page. Carter Page is has been a a, a known person as it's been put, since 2014 for suspected ties to the Russian mob, to various Russian agents. And so they've been monitoring him forever. And so when he got involved in the Trump campaign, they became concerned. And as we have speculated on the show in previous episodes, the first place that you hear heard in the media was that the Trump dossier, that the Steele dossier was used to get the FISA warrant was me speculating that that happened. And I think I'm about to be proven right because it, by all accounts, the Steele dossier, uh, uh, a this piece is the of one, this is the one that was like the P total, gate, the P gate the that one, was on BuzzFeed. Yeah, that was totally fabricated or completely wrong. Parts of it, it were, but yeah, the parts of it were fabricated, like the P thing. It was a, it was you know, several dozen pages of what this British former British spy was hired by Fusion GPS. Fusion GPS was an oppo research firm founded by ex-Wall Street Journal investigative reporters. The Washington Examiner, a, a right-leaning website, during the primaries hired this firm to do oppo research on all the candidates. Well, when he got the nomination, when Trump got the nomination, Hillary had one of her law firms go and hire Fusion GPS to continue the work on Trump that they had started. And they hired this guy named Christopher Steele, who was a former British spy who had expertise in Russian affairs. And he put together this document and basically, you know, Trump's attorneys and Carter Page and all these people had had a bunch of Russian contacts and blah, blah, blah. And it, and it was an oppo research document. And the the guy, the head of of fusion gps has already said that one person died as a release as a result of this memo being leaked which Seth i thought was Rich. which i thought was interesting for him to say uh and if now you remember when we were talking about the fisa program and snowden we always said what happens when the section 702 all the all the prism stuff all this stuff is used for political purposes are are we about to find out, and we don't know, are we about to find out that that happened? Did a political oppo research document, was it taken to a FISA court and authorized spying on the Trump campaign, on the, the phone calls, emails, text messages, communications of Carter Page, including conversations that he might have had with Trump or anybody affiliated with the Trump campaign, was that used to spy on the Trump campaign? And what was that information used for? And where did that information go? Did Barack Obama and the security state give information and leak things to Hillary's claim campaign? We don't know. Yes. We don't know. Yes. So we're they did. We're about to find out. And you out. know why they did, right? Because then, you wouldn't then, do something like that unless you knew you could get away with it. Right. And the polls were showing... Zero percent chance yeah, Trump could win. Right, she's gonna win, so we can do whatever we need to make sure she wins. It would have never now it because she can cover it all up once she's in office. Now when she has that power at she the can same make time. Sure that never gets out. Part of what they think is in this document are the problems with the investigation of Hillary Clinton. Now you have Peter Strzok, who is the guy that was exchanging text messages with McCabe. his mistress, McCabe. Tom, and Andrew McCabe, who was his wife. He was, stepped down just now, right? Yeah, yeah he just stepped down. Because Mc he's named in the memo. It's His name's going to be in the memo. Right. McCabe was scheduled to retire in a couple months, but he sped it up. McCabe's wife was running for a state house seat in Virginia. Terry McAuliffe, who was the chief fundraiser head of the DNC during the Clinton administration. And governor of Virginia. Governor of Virginia at the time donated half a, half a million dollars, I think it was, to her election effort. <laughs> and... He didn't tell anybody that that happened for six months. So you you have these text messages where you have one of the experts in both. He, Peter Strzok helped write the Comey memo that said we, Hillary Clinton's off the hook. He was involved in the Mueller investigation, and he clearly was biased against Trump. That 
if it, if it means nothing, it still looks really bad. And you have all of these uh, characters on both sides where you do have shady people in the Trump administration dealing with Russians. They're on, not honest brokers necessarily. And then you've got all of the Mueller team and the people in the Justice Department where Hillary Clinton was allowed to bring her lawyer and sit next to her during uh, uh, the uh, question and answers. Do you think that Donald Trump would be able to go and sit if he if the tables were turned do you think donald trump knowing what we know about peter strock would he be allowed to go in and be asked questions by the fbi without being sworn in now you can go to jail for lying to the fbi like michael flynn wasn't sworn in he lied to the fbi he went to jail uh hillary clinton did the same thing huma abedin did the same thing none of them got charged none of them were charged with perjury it's all been proven that they lied about the email servers. The uh, I think the only person that got in trouble was the kid who set up the DNC server in Hillary's house. And he, his lawyer that represented him in that trial, works on the Mueller team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've that's, got... That's one unique path. Is that, is that yeah. Imran Ar 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 Arwan? Uh, Emma, no, that's the that's the guy in the house. He set up uh, some the of the servers for the servers there, for the, at, house. At the house. Yeah. yeah, like how could you ever think like, oh hey, um, I, I work on servers for a living. I'll end up being a political patsy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you you have a lot of these different connections where it's a very cozy connection between the Obama Justice Department, the Obama FBI. After eight years, a lot of these people, you know, you can say what you want. Like I think Robert Mueller is a man who is an honorable man. Like, I get these sense, and everybody who talks about Robert Mueller says, this dude is no nonsense, he's as nonpartisan as one can be, like, he just wants the truth. But when you read the text messages from Peter Strzok, I can't say the same about that guy. You know what I mean? So, Jim Comey, if you read his Twitter, he's a nut job. You know, it's like reading Chelsea Manning's Twitter. It's like, I was down with you until I saw how many emojis you used, and now that's just a sign of mental illness. So, I'm out. <laughs> Uh, so, so the memo that will be released, uh, probably tomorrow morning or early next week, that, that is supposedly detailing all of the ways that they messed up the Hillary investigation and the Trump stuff. Hillary was basically given counsel, wasn't sworn in, she lied to the FBI, and she was let off the hook. And then you look at the situation and you go, okay, they were going to recommend charges, in July of an election year for one of the major party candidates like there it's the Justice Department and the FBI and the CIA all that's supposed to be non-political what does she think she's a Kennedy or something <laughs> right you know if and really what it comes down to is what Galt says they none of they none of them thought this was going to be an issue if everything had played out the way that the Trump people thought and the Clinton people thought, none of this would be going on. Trump didn't even think he was going to win. He didn't think he was going to win. Clinton didn't write a concession speech. I don't think that <laughs> anybody, Nobody on anybody who side. tells you, oh, you don't think Trump was going to win, uh, yeah, you're stupid. Like, there's, you there's got lucky. no <laughs> doubt in my mind. Like, Michael Flynn is on record saying, this is only a problem if we win. And by Trump winning, Everybody like Hope Hicks. I haven't really read into what she's in trouble for, but he's you know she's allegedly sleeping with the the president, and uh, it really she's... explains that breakdown you saw from the Obama officials. Like yeah. they were all like break mentally broken after right. they lost because they, they were know. freaking out. They all know they were like the White House is burning down, guys. <laughs> so right. So do you think that this is going to have anything shocking and revelatory in it, or do you think it's going to ignite a fire that leads to shocking and revelatory things? It More that than the other. I don't think that this memo, because I don't think Devin Nunez is somebody that is a reputable character. I, I think that Nun Nunez is a Republican, and I think that he's trying to make a name for himself, and I think he's willing to kind of go to any lengths, even fudging things, and that's what the FBI has said. The FBI has said that there are parts of this memo that are just completely false. Uh, what th the smoking gun is if they can get the FISA re documents released, and the president has the authority to declassify those if he wants. He and can declassify anything. Anything the, he wants. The and president so, has above, 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 above top secret. Right. He can do whatever he wants to the classification of any document that is right. classified as president. So 
So what? The, the, remember, as we talked about a few episodes ago, uh, when we talked about the FISA Section 702 episode, where we talked about the FISA process, they get pieces of evidence and they fill out paperwork that is about the thickness of the Cincinnati phone book and submit that, and then the judge signs off on it or says, you need to go back and fix some of this, and then they go back and tweak it and all that good stuff. And so a FISA judge is not going to authorize something unless it's pretty, especially on an American citizen, unless it's really smoking gun stuff. Like, they've got proof that this guy is a Russian agent. Mm. How but do you know here's, that? here's the point. Okay. That's the assumption that we've all been operating true, under. true. If it comes out that they're authorizing secret FISA warrants on American citizens, wi- warrantless wiretaps on American citizens on flimsy enough proof, like a political opposition research document that has fake stories about Russian peace, peace stuff, like that's the scandal. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is the scandal that the security state of the United States government was used by Barack Obama and his his administration You're to spy on political opponents. I mean, that's that's worse than Watergate. It's worse than Watergate. That's way worse it's than Watergate. It's absolutely worse. true. Every bit of it. Oh, I'm sure. Every I, bit of we, it. We've always assumed that. I would I would like I would like to have your confidence. Oh. But so somehow, confident. somehow the security state always finds a way oh, they, to they may cover it ass. up. They may cover it up. So they, yeah. we, we may not ever get the truth. That I mean, that would be. <laughs> but it, it's, if that it if that ends up happening, like if there is, I mean, anything's possible. Like right. Trump got elected, so <laughs> like if <laughs> yeah if if it does end up domino affecting to that revelation, like I like I doubt it's tomorrow. Like they would have like if it is, then they would be like that can't be true, and right. they would do more investigation, and then it would be like the investigation's results would be whatever. It, it, it took it took. Years for Watergate to have fully unfold, right? And, and it wasn't even they were like you know eighteen minutes missing tape, and like right. they had a they had an actual you know leaker, like they had a source, like a Here, lot of things happened that other than just you know a memo got released. This oh, is no, why th- this this is, has been a building thing for a while. Oh no, now, yeah, yeah, though. yeah. But they this have, isn't just one thing. They have until January first, twenty nineteen, to get this done, because there's no way, in my opinion, they keep the house. If they lose the House and possibly the Senate, which I don't think is going to happen. If Donald Trump, we didn't say this during the so too part, but I should say this. If Donald Trump can stay off Twitter, his approval ratings are 60% right now. And if Donald Trump can ten, completely 180 his approval ratings, then there's a chance they keep the Senate in the House. And if they do that, then this is a years-long investigation. And then he keeps the presidency. If they lose the House and they lose the Senate, then this investigation is done Jan 1 when the Democrats take over because they will not have it. And you don't have the same power of oversight and investigation when you're the minority party. You just you, don't. You, you don't. Unless you create secret warrantless courts. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. just like Obama did. <laughs> it, it's it, – it, I guess – so he still has those powers. Uh, Obama uh, left those powers for him, so right. he still does. At what point? At he what, still has a way to investigate. At what point do you? At what point do you think that? Because not everybody in Congress knows about what happens in the intelligence community. Mm-hmm. You have to be in like you have to have the clearance. You have to be on the committees and stuff. Right. So do you think that if it does come out that there is a chance, a realistic chance, that the president of the United States was using the intelligence apparatus developed to fight terrorism to spy for political purposes on American citizens without a Fourth Amendment warrant. Do you think that that would make them be like, I guess how likely do you think that would get them to move past the politics of it being against a Democrat president Mm -hmm. and not be like, this is too big to just ignore? Do you think that that could happen? I think that if that's the case, if Donald Trump turns it into an issue, it's big enough for everybody to care. Because that is a that is probably the biggest scandal in the history of America. That's bigger than any of them. It's bigger than Watergate. It's bigger than Teapot Dome. It's yeah, because you're, you're talking about with Creep. They broke into the Democratic Party headquarters and took some photos of some documents. Right. Like, you know, we're this talking about— This is the about, abuse of power. This is yeah. the, the blind— abuse of its arbitrary power like right. nixon tried to get away with it right but everyone was like he broke the law right. this is literally like you're abusing it's legal what you're doing 
Right. But it is it shouldn't clearly be illegal. wrong. Yeah, it shouldn't and be this legal is at all. a huge scandal. Yeah. And like like I said, this would be bigger than any scandal in the history of the United well, States, in my opinion. Yeah, they I kept agree. passing those the those laws, and we kept saying, that this includes American citizens. And they kept saying, well, we'll, we'll never use it against American we citizens. We take our authority seriously. Well, we'll we never. need safety. We need safety. We need safety. And then the safe, reality safe, is that I, I, it's going to be 80% of all of these warrants from these FISA courts are on American citizens. But if it's going to be 8 right. out of every 10. But it, it, yeah. it's a lot. I, we joke yeah. that we're on some government watch list somewhere, but that's only because it's halfway true. Like, we probably are. Like, Yeah. yeah I, mean, uh, I mean, remember the time when I made the joke on Facebook and put the NSA keywords when Greg was boarding a plane? They delayed it for 20 minutes, and they searched his bag. Within a matter of five minutes, they had scanned all of Facebook for my NSA keywords and had found what flight he was on and searched its bags. Like, that is how robust it is. I think it goes so far beyond what we even can comprehend mm -hmm. at this point. Like, like, just the fact that Facebook Live now can scan your face and tag you automatically in a Facebook Live. You know, it did it today. It scanned the video and tagged my Facebook. Hmm. Like, that's a piece of technology that we go, wow, that's really amazing. Well, what about the unseen technology of an all-powerful, no-rules, unlimited-budget government <laughs> that has more computing power, more hard drives, more processing power than all of Silicon Valley combined? Yeah. What powers do they have? And so you... you you get one FBI, one motivated deputy director of the FBI who is working with a deputy de de deputy attorney general or uh, two FBI agents who are as high as Strzok and McCabe are, and they find a dossier, and they are anti-Trump, and they create a story where they get a FISA warrant, and... The FISA judge just says, okay, well, you're Andy McCabe. You're the deputy director of the FBI. Of course I trust you. I've worked with you for 20 years. You're a man of great integrity. This Carter Page must be really bad. Well, the judge doesn't know. He just trusts Andrew McCabe and doesn't know that he's part of this group inside the DOJ and the FBI that is ready to take him out. Now, this is all conspiratorial speculation but it's all within the realm of possibility. This is all what everybody's trying to find out. Yeah, that is or, this what Or happened? the judge knows there's no accountability for right. it. Right. So it's not the Mueller investigation that... See, it started out with, we need to investigate the Mueller investigation. <laughs> it's now, do we need to investigate the security services of the United States government? And that is a much bigger specter, much more frightening prospect, because what happens when, what happens when we don't trust the watchmen anymore? What happens when the American people, they have such little trust in American institutions, and the one they trust the least is the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and the people that have unlimited spying? That's a dangerous proposition for this country. You know, frankly, my opinion— uh, Good. The, Honestly, yeah. The, that would be a good thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I, but <laughs> frankly, I think that—let's say that the worst is comes to light, and people realize this— Maybe I'm cynical, but I don't think it will have a huge effect on America— like like we like it would on us like yeah. I think for the politicos and the and the people that are attuned to these kind of things and and the history just people who study history and all these kind maybe older folks right like they would recognize this as being like insanely bad yeah but I don't get the impression that a large section of America would even care yeah no and, I agree and that's sad to me yeah. they didn't care about Edward Snowden's revelations in prism the they turned the Obama administration turned the argument to is this person patriotic or not? Going back to what we are talking about is with he, the kneeling. Is he not a traitor? Is he a, is he a traitor or not? D what, and so it wasn't about, don't look at the revelations. Look at, is he a traitor? You know, and I still have people who are libertarians, who are in our Facebook group, who listen to the show, who are like, why would you defend Edward Snowden or Chelsea Manning? Like, they're traitors. Like, go see the Snowden movie. It, it's literally the definition of a red herring fallacy. Right. Go see the Snowden movie by Oliver Stone. It every piece of every part of it is accurate. I lived through it. I studied it extensively. The Snowden movie is all accurate. It's a great representation of exactly what happened. When you are done, email me and thank me because your mind has been changed because there's no way not to watch that movie and walk out of there unafraid of your government. You will be afraid of your government after you see it. 
So. I, I'm intrigued. I I, th- I remember hearing somebody on uh, one of the members of the house said that he wished he hadn't read it because he doesn't like the he doesn't like knowing that our government is capable of doing the things that they want now. Yep. Or capable of what's in that memo. memo. Now, how much of that is just you know sensationalism and over the top rhetoric, and how much of it is literally that this guy. This memo. I mean, this memo. We don't know. The memo could be a freaking bombshell. Like yeah. Trump could be re- rejecting all of the advice of his various advisors by releasing this. Um, and you know, I, I'm sure that a lot of I've read a lot of people in the House, Republicans included, House and Senate, Republicans included, have said, "Don't do this. This don't release this. This shouldn't be released to the public." Um, is Peter is Peter King against it? Because then I'm I'm, I'm for it. If Peter King. From right. New York is for something I am against it. But like is, a lot, I've, I've been wa- I've been re- you know I've th- been <laughs> watching that a lot of them are saying that don't do this. So if he does, if this is a bombshell, and it does, I mean yeah, that if it shows that the president of the United States used his authority under the Patriot Act to spy on political opponents or on behalf of a political ally, for it won't use, it won't implicate him Obama. Well, it won't be that big. I don't know how else could you get around it. Yeah, Unless, but, ah, well, okay, the administration. Okay, yeah. so did the it'll admi- never did ever the Obama be put administration, on Obama. and then it'll be what did you know and when did you know it? Uh, but yeah, if, if that happened, I mean, that is the biggest. Think about it. Everybody says, oh, he was scandal free. No administration is scandal free. You have Fast and Furious. You have Benghazi, but like those are very minor scandals compared to like I don't know starting a war in Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Or on false intelligence or Watergate, so but yeah, that that would be the <clears throat> if if that comes to light, that would be the biggest scandal in my view, in the attack. history of the United States. There would be not uh, there could be nothing bigger than that. All right.